All right. I think I'm live. I always have to wait for confirmation on D Live here. Here we go. Hello. <laughs> happy Tuesday, everybody, and happy quarantine day, whatever you're in. Um, got a little interesting things I wanted to talk about and cover today, some updates. And I was going to read to you from the Jesus Storybook Bible a couple stories that are pretty awesome. Um, yeah, as always, faith, loyalty, hope, stick true to those things, and your life will just be amazing. <laughs> even when times are rough, even when society's collapsing and economies are crumbling, uh, faith, loyalty, hope, those things will get you through the day. They truly will. Um, hi, everyone tuning in, Caitlin and Bright Day Share. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, you can catch my, or you can send me stuff at my P.O. Box. That's um, S E A N C O R Y, Sean Corey at P.O. Box 330172, Nashville, Tennessee 37203. If you want to send me letters, questions, books, art, candles, anything cool or fun, um, you can send it to me there. Um, I'll read questions and letters if you want on stream in the future. So hit me up if you don't, if you can't catch my live chats to ask me questions. Um, hey K, hey Free Gen X, how's it going? Um, as always, you can catch my live streams here. I usually post uh, in advance when they're going to be happening, but usually it's going to be Saturday mornings. I've just been busy on Saturdays um, last week and this week, this upcoming week. So today is the day. <laughs> Tuesday is the day. Um, but you can catch all the live streams at dlive.tv slash Um People send questions in the chat room. That's kind of what I usually focus on more. So if you want to be more lively in the chat, if you want to ask chat questions, be sure to go there. Um, everyone on Instagram, I don't really do Instagram all the time, so be sure to sign up and uh, subscribe to me at dlive.tv slash Um And if you missed this, if you missed my live streams, as always, you can catch the replays at bitshoot.com slash seanvplanet. That's B-I-T-C-H-U-T-E dot com slash S-E-A-N-V-P-L-A-N-E-T. Um, and then also on YouTube and you can catch all my podcasts. I had a really good podcast come out last week with, um, Steven Ignoramus, a YouTube, <laughs> YouTube sensation. And, um, it's really funny, really insightful. We get into some interesting topics. And then I have one coming up this week with Derek from the burning boots podcast, who is, uh, just pretty intelligent, pretty smart. And we got into some interesting conversations. Um, and you can catch all those, the audio podcasts on, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, Google Podcasts by just subscribing or tuning into my channel on there, Sean B. Planet. Um, Bright Day says, I do interviews Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Check them out. I'm booked up a while, but maybe you could come on sometime. It's interactive. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to. I was honestly, um, hit up my DMs. Bright's, Bright Day say, say her here. <laughs> I'm definitely saying that wrong. But uh, hit up my DMs, and uh, we'll, we'll be in contact. Um but what I wanted to talk about today is the funniest thing is is of all this nonsense cold stuff, I got like a little sniffle cold. So that's the funniest thing is I got the COVID. I got the COVID. <laughs> I got the Rona. <laughs> I got, I'm in the quarantine. I got the Rona. Um, but it's hilarious. It's, it's, it's the one symptom of not having the COVID. So um, yeah, I got the sniffle somehow, and not uh, not the COVID, not the not the COVID. Um, but um, yeah, the last few weeks have been pretty interesting. Um, checking out Eastern Orthodox churches. I've been exploring Orthodoxy, and um, I went to a Serbian Orthodox church and a Coptic Orthodox church. A Coptic, I guess, is like an Egyptian. Um, both just super based, just super like humble, um, very like family oriented. You just get this vibe in there of just like these really tight knit, close families, and um, beautiful people. Like just really like. Um, during service, everyone's very serious and very like just focused. Like everyone's very focused on the father and just the, like the ceremonies taking place, and very focused, very like looking above, looking at like the icons and relics in the in the building, which was beautiful. And both both buildings were just beautiful in their own way. Um, a lot of like handcrafted art, and a lot of uh, hand painted art. And yeah, I mean it's just very like it was just very awesome. Like they're very serious. They're very like there to focus on the Lord. <laughs> it was so beautiful. But um, I mean, before and after, they were just the most like loving, happy, friendly people. Very like, you could just tell like good, strong families. Uh, I admire their appreciation of saints and martyrs and the art. Um, 
I really like the art. Someone, one of them, I asked one of them about it. He was explaining that um, their artwork, they, they make it expressionless. So all the cop, or all the um, Coptic and Serbian, but uh, mostly Russian to the uh, Orthodox churches, they love art. They love to use art as like symbols to remind you um, to, you know, think of, think of our Lord and appreciate our Lord. But the, the figures themselves have expressionless, um, what would it be? Expressions, <laughs> emotionless expressions, very just like straight line, no smiles, no frowns. And the whole idea is let like you put your emotions onto them. I thought that whole concept was just pretty beautiful and just how much they appreciate their, their saints and their martyrs and how they go, really go out of their way to um, remember and love on them, <laughs> never forgetting about them, keep it on the front of the mind, um, all the people who've laid down their lives and made big sacrifices for the faith and to spread Christ's message throughout the world. Um, it's just beautiful. And um, yeah, they focus on what's above. And at the same time, they take their earthly bodies and put it on the ground. Like sometimes when they, they do the, the cross and then they'll put their hand on the ground. Or sometimes they'll do this and they'll literally get down and bend and put their forehead like on the ground. And something about that was really beautiful. Like it didn't really seem like bowing. It seemed more like, uh, I mean, not bowing as in like an insignificance thing, but like more of like a remembrance of grounding yourself, like not being too in your thoughts or in your own head or feeling too high and mighty yourself. Um, and just to focus on like the Holy Trinity community and just masculinity and family, um, family, <laughs> and, um, all of it just felt right. Um, the weird thing was both one, you know, one was Serbian Orthodox. It was like 95% in Serbian. So I just didn't understand what they were saying or what the songs were about. But um, in the same thing with Coptic, I think it was Arabic. Um, it might've been like a different variation. I don't know if Egyptian Arabic is different than just the mainstream, but it was mostly Arabic other than like, you know, 10% of basically when they read from the Bible, they uh, read from an English Bible. So I can understand those parts. I can understand <laughs> the gospel readings, but not much else. Um, but just the ceremony and just being in a building right now, these dark, crazy, chaotic days was just an awesome, beautiful experience. So I'm exploring orthodoxy further. Uh, <laughs> that's for sure. And I wanted to get to, I, I have a reading list now. I have all these books I keep meaning to read and never get to. So half of this is going to be encouragement to make me actually get to reading. And half of it is going to be just sharing my thoughts with you guys of what I like take, like the interesting things from the books I've been reading and um, sharing them and just kind of giving my take on them. And um, we'll, we're going to read a couple of this. This is the book I just finished, the, uh, the Jesus Storybook Bible. <laughs> it's for kids, but it's awesome. It's uh, it's actually awesome. I recommend it if you ever get a chance to read it. Um, especially if you're if you're new to reading the Bible, it uh, really just breaks down big concepts, very simple and easy, and kind of cuts out some of the malarkey. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's just awesome. And the pictures are amazing. The pictures are <laughs> the pictures make it. You know. Um, but yeah, also I've been in a, I have been the reason I haven't been reading these books that everyone keeps recommending to me are is I've been reading the Bible. So I just finished all the way through Deuteronomy. Um, it was a little rough. A lot of it's very confusing. A lot of it doesn't really speak to your heart. It's just kind of um, I think is important to grasp and important to realize and, and know the context of like our forefathers and our ancestors. Um, but I'm starting Joshua and I hear that's where things pick up and get interesting. <laughs> um, the stories start to be a little more like lively and entertaining and fun to read. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you learn a lot from reading the Bible just in general and just like kind of relating it to your own life. And um, yeah, just kind of thinking about where our ancestors came from and what they had to deal with. And um, what I had been doing too, was I would try to read a lot, like a good, good portion of, um, the old Testament. And then I'd randomly open up to some, some kind of phrase or some kind of book in their chapter of the gospel. And every time it just seems to be like the perfect phrase at the perfect time, you know? So I recommend doing that. Like if it's, um, almost as like a palate cleanser, like if it, if it's too overwhelming or too confusing reading the old Testament, I always recommend just, I don't always, but I recommend now, um, just opening up randomly somewhere in the New Testament and just kind of reading, you know, picking out the place that was you were meant to read at that moment at that time about um, the beautiful part. Um, 
Yeah, and I have this thing, this Kairos reading card. It actually really helps. Like something like this that like you you block off the books you've read. I don't know if you guys can see that. See, so, you know, as you as you read, you can like black off the chapters you have read and haven't read. Um, really helps. Also, kind of inspires you, like a little fun game to. Uh, <laughs> we got to check another box today, you know. Um, but yeah, and so we'll get into we'll read a little bit of the Jesus Story Book Bible. These are the books I'm reading next. Um, e. Michael Jones's new book, um, definitely on the next on my list. It's the next one I'm going to be reading for sure. And then I have this guy too, um, Holy Sexuality in the Gospel. Uh, that's going to be an interesting one. And I feel like there's a lot of like truth bombs and awesome uh, takes and perspectives to be learned from that. So I'll be sharing what I learned from these two books as I read coming up. Um, I also got – actually here. I also got this. So after I do those two, after I break those two down, um, I'm going to be reading this one. And we'll be covering this one a lot, I'm sure. This one is just – based <laughs> just truth bombs the sayings of the desert fathers it's um some of the early early christians um who left persecution and went into the desert of egypt and libya i think like the northern um african countries um just escaping all the empires of the day and just going and living like as nomads and um just crazy people <laughs> in the mountains and the caves of the desert and um, just how based and how truly like worshiping they were and how religious and um, faithful they were. And um, yeah, it's just, I guess I keep just hearing really good things about it and people reviewing it about how just awesome it is and inspiring it is. So um, as I further, further, <laughs> further my journey along to becoming a monk, uh, <laughs> after I read some of these interesting books, I'll go back to reading some books that uh, encourage me to go live in the desert and, um, avoid all the temptation of this world and our society. Um, but yeah, um, Trina Bear says, what state you in? Uh, I'm in Tennessee. I'm um, from California, coming from San Diego, but I'm in Nashville, Tennessee now um, as of the last few months. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I couldn't have, couldn't have picked a better time to leave that, that state of California um, before all this craziness comes down. Um, thank you, Jessica, Israel Bear, and Bodido, Bondi, Bodido, Bod, Bodido. Thank you on D Live. Um, but yeah, I wanted to quickly before I, before we start reading from the Jesus Storybook Bible, um, just cover some things about this whole pandemic, um, the pandemic, and the uh, update and theories I had on it. Overall, we're in a spiritual battle. Um, this will all turn out to be a gift from God in time. Um, it's so easy to see <laughs> like all the chaos is made right in time churches are closing their doors jobs are being lost money and material losses rights restricted sanity stability is just generally disturbed uh, but kids are being homeschooled less, there's less indoctrination taking place there's less gluttony and indulging and in shit foods and sinful distractions um, there's less abortions taking place there's less pollutions there's no strip clubs there's less porn production, um, less processed foods, and more guns, and a bigger um, emphasis on um, homesteading and getting guns and protecting yourself and not living off like the teat of the government, as people on the internet say. Um, but in general, yeah, I mean, out of all the bad things that happen, I mean, good things are coming out. I mean, you, in all the chaos and the destruction, there is good. Things are made right, and we'll get to that. But, um, yeah, I just keep, I mean, talking with people, doing interviews with people who are very, like, political minded. And um, <laughs> he says, don't hate on my state, bro. <laughs> it was mine. Don't worry. It was my state. Um, California. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, just talking with people, politically minded people, my friends, just people on my podcast stuff, uh, the Discord page, my Discord page, my Twitter um, it's very been kind of interesting just listening and hearing out like their theories about what's happening because obviously this is just a big plan. Um, it's pretty obvious to anyone that's like sane and sober that the rich, the elites knew that there was an economic bubble about to pop and they knew that they needed to be in control of it when it happened. So obviously they're using this fake virus hoax thing as an excuse to shut down businesses um, stifle economic growth, um, stop supply chains, supply lines, trade routes, and just basically reset the economy. 
and make it look like it was all caused by this freak accident of nature (laughs) and not their own, you know, uh, corrupt behaviors and their own uh, manipulation of the money and trade routes and distribution systems. Um, It's pretty obvious. It's pretty obvious, guys. Uh, But if you are just, you know, obsessed and addicted to pornos and drugs and just living a generally sinful life where you're just living in fear and despair, um, it probably makes sense that maybe a couple hundred people dead or maybe a, a thousand, it might be a thousand um, sometime soon, total dead by this thing would terrify you and make you um, accept tyranny <laughs> and accept losing your job and accept losing your retirement. I mean, maybe that would make sense to you somehow, um, making us all fear each other and run away scared. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's just hard for me to understand how those people think anymore. Um, I can understand it because I was in that state at one time, but uh, it's just so far removed from my life right now that the obvious, what is obvious in reality <laughs> is so clear. And um, then listening and hearing people who aren't in the same state of mind comment on the same reality happening to all of us um, is kind of weird <laughs> to say, to put it nicely. It's uh, kind of weird. But I like hearing just overall in general, like all the theories people have about what this is and what it is going to be happening as a result of it. I mean, are we at war with China right now? Are we secretly at war and no one's really talking about it? You know, like a war that's being fought with economics and bioweapons instead of bombs and bullets. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Is it uh, covert operations by the government? Some big planned operation, um, psychological operation? I don't know. Could be a big script, a big hoax. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see in a few months. Um, Is it really just trade wars? It might just be giant trade war battles happening between different powers, um, vying for power in the global market, the new world order or whatever, you know, people trying to like vie for power on top on the pyramid of the new world order. Maybe. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. Um, The reality, though, is that CEOs and politicians knew what was coming for months, months ago. Um, Politicians were selling their stock. CEOs were stepping down from their companies. And China knew something was happening in in December. I mean, they started organizing troops and shutting down protests pretty quickly and making quarantine shelters and basically gulags in their country in December. So they knew something was coming. Um, The CEOs stepping down, I mean, they obviously knew something was about to happen (laughs) before it happened. That wasn't a coincidence. Um, I covered them on a previous stream, but there was thousands, an unprecedented amount of CEOs have stepped down in the last six months, Um, some from very big, powerful corporations, um, very unprecedented. And yeah, politicians are selling their stock. Politicians obviously knew something was coming, just... um, yeah, the way they ended the impeachment was all weird and fishy, too. So they kind of knew that some other big talking point political event was about to come in a month or two. And it's just obvious. I mean, they knew something was coming. I don't know it, how dialed in they were, <laughs> but they were definitely handed some kind of script or some kind of game plan of giant economic collapse, uh, a planned pop of the economic bubble. So we'll see. I think this is just one big hoax that a lot of different people and different factions are using to vie for power. They're fighting with each other. They're fighting with um, against their enemies, their supposed enemies, and everyone's trying to make something out of it, get a little bit out of it. Politicians are trying to get reelected. CEOs are trying to make, you know, cash out and not get thrown into <laughs> prisons or whatever, um, not be thrown into bankruptcy. Uh, everyone's just doing their little, little biddings for power and money. Um, uh, and the whole idea, this whole this whole thing has been a staged um, economic collapse under the guise of a pandemic. <laughs> Again, a pandemic that I think maybe we're at a thousand deaths um, in, in, in this year from this virus, um, which you could look at and say, wow, that's a lot of people dying. Oh, no. Or you could look at like the reality that like 10,000 people died from the flu and um, 30,000 people in that same time period died from heart disease and about 20,000 people died from suicides. Um, But no one ever really seems to care about those things other than just talking about it, maybe (laughs) once in a while. Um, So the whole thing is just clearly staged and fake. 
in general, though, uh, the biggest conspiracy theory I see, I don't even know if it's, I think it might just be reality, is um, Satan just spreading fear, despair, anger um, in order to further distance us from God. Um, that seems to be the obvious one. The uh, <laughs> if you're looking for the who is at top of the pyramid of this of this whole event, it's um, definitely Satan. The devil made us close our churches, fear our neighbors, accept government power grabs, and fight each other over toilet paper. Um, he's laughing at us. He's laughing at us, and he's looking up at God and laughing at how stupid we are. Look at your children. Look at how stupid your children are. Look how easily manipulated they are. Look at how sinful they are. And you can tell by how fear, fear, fearful of death they are. But um, the good takeaway, again, all the craziness, all the madness, all the insanity, it's like at the end of the day, this is all going to turn out so good. <laughs> it's going to be so good for everyone. Um, even the bad, even the evil, even the sinful, like it's going to be made right for you in time too. Just give it time. Because love is good, anger is bad. And after all of this, I think we're going to wake up and see that. And people are going to start to realize that in their hearts, even if their mind is denying that reality, your heart after this whole thing calms down, you're going to see love is good. Anger is bad. And if you just reject the bad, you can love and be loved. And I think that's what people are going to be wanting this summer when all <laughs> when our quarantines are released, when we get back to work, when we get back to just living a normal life, you're going to want to love and be loved. And it's going to be very obvious to just reject anger and reject the evil of this world. And I guess the last thing I'll say before we get into talking about Joseph, which is a similar topic, uh, fear is the virus and hope is the cure. And you can get mad at me and call me names for saying that all you want. But in a few months, you'll be agreeing with me that this whole thing, fear was the virus and the cure to it was just hope. And yeah, you can mark, you can mark that down, write that down and, and remind me of it later. But, um, Overall, the story of Joseph, Joseph is being fulfilled today. Do not be fooled. Um, Joseph said to his brothers, the evil you intended to do to me has been turned by God's power into something good. And that's what we're about to witness today. Um, yeah. So let's read it. I'm going to read you again. Jesus Storybook Bible, guys. I can't recommend this enough. Even if you're an adult man <laughs> full of pride and thinking you're too cool for school or whatever, uh, the Jesus Storybook Bible. It's awesome. It's truly awesome. But I'm going to read you the uh, story of the forgiving prince, the story of Joseph and how it relates to us today. Um, so this is from Genesis 37 through 46. And this is, again, the Jesus Storybook Bible version. Jacob had 12 sons, but all of his sons, but of all his sons, Joseph was his favorite. One day, Jacob gave Joseph a splendid new robe. It was beautiful and rich with all the colors of the rainbow, but it made Joseph's brothers jealous. They wanted rich ra rainbow robes too. Then, to make matters worse, Joseph kept on having these special dreams. I dreamed I was the greatest. I was king, Joseph told his brothers, and you all bowed down to me. Now, I'm sure you know, even if Joseph didn't, that telling your brothers things like that isn't a very good idea. Joseph's brothers hated him even more. They wanted to kill Joseph and his dreams. And one day, that's exactly what they tried to do. They tore Joseph's rainbow robe off him and sold him to slave trainers, traders for 20 pieces of silver. The traders took Joseph to Egypt and made him into a slave. The brothers went home and lied to their father, telling him that Joseph was dead. That's the end of that dreamer, they thought. But they were wrong. God had a magnificent dream for Joseph's life, and even when it looked like everything had gone wrong, God would use it all to help make the dream come true. God would use everything that was happening to Joseph to do something good. Meanwhile, though, things were not looking good for Joseph in Egypt. He was far from home and from his dad. Then he got blamed for something he didn't do, and, even though he had done nothing wrong, he was punished and thrown in jail. But God had not left Joseph. One night, Pharaoh, who was the king of Egypt, had a scary dream about thin cows gobbling up fat cows. What on earth did it mean? He didn't know, but Joseph was a dream expert, so Pharaoh sent for him. It means a famine is coming, Joseph explained. There won't be enough food. 
Pharaoh was so pleased by Joseph's skill that he immediately took Joseph out of jail and made him a prince. Now back home, Joseph's brothers had run out of food and everyone was hungry. God's special family was in danger. If they didn't get food soon, they would soon starve to death. So Joseph's brothers traveled to Egypt to buy food. They came and knelt before the new prince. His brothers didn't know that the prince was Joseph, but Joseph knew who they were. Joseph's dream, the one about his brothers bowing down to him, it was coming true. It's me, Joseph cried. When they saw it was Joseph, his brothers were afraid. They had wronged Joseph. They had sinned and they knew it. Now Joseph would certainly punish them. But Joseph looked at his brothers and his eyes filled with tears. Even though his brothers had hurt him and hated him and wanted him dead, in spite of everything, he could not stop loving them. His heart, which they had broken, filled up with love, and Joseph forgave them. Joseph threw his arms around them. Don't be afraid, he said. Behind what you were doing, underneath everything that was happening, God was doing something good. God was making everything right again. Joseph didn't punish him. He rescued them. He brought God's special family to live safely with him in Egypt. One day, God would send another prince, a young prince whose heart would break. Like Joseph, he would leave his home and his father. His brothers would hate him and want him dead. He would be sold for pieces of silver. He would be punished even though he had done nothing wrong. But God would use everything that happened to this young prince, even the bad things, to do something good, to forgive the sins of the whole world. And I love that. The Bible story is a little more confusing, obviously. This is made more more readable for kids and um, idiots like me. But um, it was just awesome. It was awesome to read during these times um, when everyone's angry and scared and um, – I don't know, everyone's running and hiding from each other, angry and afraid, um, just to know and just to be reassured that everything will be made, made right in time. It will. And yeah, that's just my general thoughts on this whole pandemic is no matter how bad things get, no matter how hard things seem and difficult they seem, if you're losing your job, if your family is sick, if you're whatever's happening, just know and keep trusting and having faith in the Lord and he will provide for you in time. Yeah, it's not a joke. <laughs> what what was bad, what what was evil will be made good by God in time. Um, just keep having faith, keep trusting the path. If you're in the valley of the shadow of death, just keep keep remind keep sticking true to your good shepherd and he will lead you to green pastures. Um that is more true than I can even explain. Um But yeah, and then I wanted to read this, another one. Another, no, I'm gonna read some more. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be your storybook leader, guys. Today, I'm gonna be your li li kids librarian leader. Um, again, the Jesus Storybook Bible. Um, this is the story of Paul. Another book, another chapter that's just amazing, um, and just something I think that can be very relatable to people today. Um, this is called a new way to see. It's uh, the story from Paul from Acts six through nine and twelve through twenty eight. And also includes concepts and stories from Colossians 2, Romans, and Ephesians 2. Um, of all the people who kept the rules, Saul was the best. I'm good at being good, he'd tell you. He was very proud and very good, but he wasn't very nice. Saul hated anyone who loved Jesus. He traveled around looking for them. He wanted to catch them and put them in prison. He wanted everyone to forget all about Jesus. He didn't believe Jesus was the rescuer, and he didn't believe Jesus was alive either. You see, Saul had never met Jesus. So one day, Jesus met Saul. Saul was on his way to Damascus when suddenly a dazzling light flashed like lightning. It was brighter than the sun. It was too bright. Saul shielded his eyes and fell to the ground. He heard a loud voice. It was too loud. It gave Saul a headache. Saul, Saul, said the loud voice, why are you fighting me? Lord, Saul answered, who are you? I am Jesus, said the voice. When you hurt my friends, you are hurting me too. Saul's whole body trembled. Go to the city, Jesus said. I'll tell you what to do. When Saul opened his eyes, he couldn't see. His helpers had to hold his hand and lead him like a little child. 
Saul was blind for three whole days, and yet it was as if he was seeing for the very first time. Meanwhile, there was a man called Ananias who loved Jesus. Jesus came to him in a dream. Go to Saul and pray for him, and I will make him see again. Ananias knew all about Saul and how he hated Jesus and his followers. Lord, he has come to hurt us. But Jesus told Ananias, Saul is the one I have chosen to tell the whole world who I am. So Ananias went to Saul. Brother Saul, Ananias said, it was Jesus you met on the road. And Ananias prayed for Saul. Suddenly Saul could see again, but he saw everything differently. He wasn't mean anymore. He even changed his name from Saul to Paul, which means small and humble, the very opposite of proud. And do you know what Ananias' name means? The Lord is full of grace. Uh, grace is just another word for gift, which is funny because that's what Paul's message was all about from then on. It's not about keeping rules, Paul told people. You don't have to be good at being good for God to love you. You just have to believe what Jesus has done and follow him. Because it's not about trying, it's about trusting. It's not about rules, it's about grace. God's free gift that cost him everything. What happened to Paul? He met Jesus. Paul got a new job. He called himself a servant and traveled everywhere telling everyone about Jesus. He got shipwrecked three times. He even ended up in prison many times. God loves us, he wrote from prison. Nothing can ever, no, not ever, separate us from the never stopping, never giving up, unbreakable, always and forever love of God he showed us in Jesus. And so it was, just as God promised Abraham that dark night all those years before, the family of God's children grew and grew until one day they would become the number more than even all the stars in the sky. I just love that. I love reading about Paul. <laughs> I love reading Acts and all of his uh, letters from prisons and all of his letters to the various people in the Roman Empire. It's beautiful because it's all about repenting. And it's the story of my life. It was the story of me being too proud, too humble, and not knowing who God was or what God was and thinking I knew I had all the answers. And I didn't find Jesus. Jesus found me. And I can relate. I mean, I wasn't blinded, but I might as well have been. <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't given some some kind of like magical he healing to show me the truth. I just kind of felt it in my heart when the time was right, when God kept calling me, and I finally decided to answer the call. Um, and it all started with repenting. It truly, all starts with just repenting, humbling yourself, and just trusting the Lord, and truly forgiving and not forgiving, but but asking for forgiveness for what you have done, the bad things you've done to yourself, the bad things you've done to others, and the bad things you've done here on earth, um, the life and the place that God has given you. Um, when you learn that, you just stop being disrespectful, you stop being uncaring, and it's just easy to live a better life, a healthier life. Repenting in general, uh, I'm going to talk about that before I end here. Um, I'm going to wrap up pretty soon, but guys, send me all your final questions and stuff, and I'll get to them. Um, repentance is a freely willed, internally cultivated process of contrition and sorrow for having distanced ourselves from God through sin. True repentance is not intolerable pain, excessive sorrow, or holding relentless guilty feelings. Repentance means a change in our thoughts, our mentality. It is an about, uh, it is an about face, a grafting of morality, and an abhorrence of sin. Repentance also means a love of virtue, benevolence, and a desire, a willingness, and a strong disposition to be rejoined to Christ through the grace of the Almighty Holy Spirit. And it's truly beautiful, guys. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Um, overcome your mistakes, your sins, anger, depression, guilt, and all other evils, and repent today. Our God is loving and forgiving, and he is waiting for you now um, to reconnect and to be saved by him. We are called to make what is bad in us into something good. Just as God is and always has done everywhere, from the darkness comes the light. Um, it's, 
it's hard to believe when you're <laughs> when you're living in sin. You think that um, you, you'll never be saved, but God's waiting for it. God's waiting for you to make the choice yourself to repent and humble yourself before Him and ask for forgiveness. And you'll truly be you'll truly be given when you learn to forgive others. Um, I think that's when you're truly born again. When you've learned to finally forgive others for their sins against you. But it really, truly starts. The whole process itself starts. I mean, you really start to feel the, the the living the living presence of God in you and around you when you repent, and it's so freeing. It's so beautiful. It's so magical. It's beyond worldly, earthly descriptions. Um, you truly know that there's God too. Um, if you're in denial of God, just start repenting and start praying to Him and you'll be <laughs> unbelievably humbled and proven wrong. Um, all your silly thoughts are going to be uh, proven to be just that silly. Um, overall, too, the devil hates a redemption story, and our Lord wants us to overcome. Just find him. Just make sure to go find him. Um, I guess that's all I have prepared. That's all I wanted to say. I want to read my Jesus Storybook Bible. Uh, I finished reading that, and uh, – Again, next, I'm going to turn into this E. Michael Jones book that just came out. Um, I keep hearing good things about it, how joking about life turned in, turned life into a joke. It's uh, supposed to be pretty good. And then we're going to be getting to this one, Holy Sexuality and the Gospel. So my next two streams are going to kind of be about those two and some other thoughts and whatever craziness happens with all of this uh, pandemic and Holocaust uh, stuff going on. Um, and yeah, the last thing I wanted to leave you with was just this, um, just this passage from Romans, Romans 12, 12. And as I was reading it, I was like, Oh, I, I know these, I know, I know these concepts. Um, I know, I know what this is about. <laughs> but Romans 12, 12 says, um, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction and faithful in prayer. I was like, where have I heard that before? Oh Yeah. Hope, loyalty, faith. Faith, loyalty, hope. Um, it's like, oh yeah, that's why that speaks to me so well. Um, be joyful in hope. Hope. Patient in affliction. Loyalty. Faithful in prayer. Faith. So as always, guys, faith, loyalty, hope. Stick true to those things and your life will just be good. <laughs> you, will, you will love and be loved. And um, if you just be good, do good, you will love and be loved as well. And that's what we need today. So I'm signing off. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, this was live stream 20. Again, I'm going to be doing some book reviews coming up on my next live streams. You can catch on my podcast. I had one come out last week that was awesome with Stephen Ignoramus. And I have one coming out this week with Derek from Burning Boots Podcast. And you can catch those on my podcast channel, the Sean V. Planet podcast channel on Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, and Google Podcast apps. Um, I recommend Spotify and Podbean. Those are kind of the two easiest and best to use. Um, you can catch all these live streams as they're happening. Again, usually on Saturday mornings. This was just a weird day. Um, Saturday mornings, my live streams are on dlive.tv slash Sean V. Planet. And sometimes on Instagram here. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Again, bright days are here. Thank you. Train a bear. Uh, Diva got no purse. Thank you. Free Gen X. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my sister tuned in. Kate is crazy. Thank you. And Caitlin Nogden. Caitlin and Ogden, maybe. Um, thank you for tuning in. And um, everyone on DLive, thanks for tuning in. No questions, but I see that you're there. So thank you. I appreciate you guys tuning in today. Um, Hopefully you're not in forced quarantine and hopefully you're choosing to tune in out of your own uh, want and desire and not because it's mandatory and you watch all your Netflix shows. Uh, <laughs> but again, yeah, guys, faith, loyalty, hope. Just try to live your life with those three guiding principles and things will work out better for you. And just be good, do good, love and be loved. And I'll catch you guys sometime in the future. I'll let you know. Have a good day.